Right off the bat, I just want to say that the point of this is not to chastise anyone for eating these foods or using certain products or to be like, oh, you're vegan? Well, like, you can do better. Going vegan or even just going vegetarian already does so much, you know, getting rid of the big, obvious animal products, right? Like the, the hunk of beef or the gallon of milk or the carton of eggs. Those are the main things you want to focus on, not the, like, creamer with a, less than 2% of milk in it, right? Or the cookies with a tiny bit of milk in it or the stuff I'm talking about here. So yeah, I just wanted to do this for those of us who have been maybe vegan for a long time and are looking for other ways to have a positive impact as consumers or to avoid certain, I guess, negative outcomes with our consumer Number one would be earth balance. Why? Because of palm oil. Earth balance is almost all palm oil. So are some of the other vegan butters. By this point, I think most people are aware, certainly most people watching this video are aware of palm oil and the issues regarding burning the rainforests and killing orangutans. I personally don't like the, you know, certified sustainable palm oil. I don't find it any more convincing than I do humane meat or happy meat or dolphin safe tuna, like they talked about in Seaspiracy. Palm oil may have high yield, but it's it stands out among plant products in terms of environmental destruction. Aside from the deaths of the intelligent people who happen to be a different, albeit hairier, species than us, the climate impact of that destruction is greater than many animal products. Only chocolate and coffee are worse in terms of plant products. Now, shade-grown coffee may solve that issue, but chocolate? Yeah, carob is just not, <laughs> it's just not gonna cut it for most of us as an alternative. Anyway, back to palm oil. I think it makes sense to use a little more land in the American Midwest to farm canola rather than burn the rainforests and all of the peat they rest on and commit genocide against orangutans. And as a bonus, canola oil has some nutritional benefits, namely omega-3s. Palm oil is pretty shit. When I need saturated fat for whatever cookie stuff like that, I prefer coconut oil and I use products using coconut oil, something like Miyoko's, which tastes so much better than Earth Balance anyway. We like coconut oil not because it's more productive, not because it's cheaper, certainly. <laughs> I think the higher cost will incentivize the industry to develop alternatives. Palm oil is ultra cheap, so there's really no strong incentive to replace it with anything unless consumers make it clear that's what they want. Unfortunately, doing all of the research and all of the breeding needed to make an alternative that's just as effective is incredibly time intensive and expensive. Fun fact, the laundry detergent company eCover actually figured all of this out years ago. They developed a palm alternative made from algae, but they stopped using it. You wanna guess why? Sometimes I feel like we deserve climate change. Number two, chow ka coconut milk. I think that's how you say it. Why? You probably already know. So in response to my criticism of palm oil, I often hear that coconut is not a good replacement because harvesting it relies on abuse of monkeys. This is partially true. Unfortunately, it came out pretty recently that chow ka specifically, as well as some other Thai sources, do use monkeys to harvest their coconuts. I will spare you the details, but yeah, they're not treated well. The good news, as I talked about in my 2020 vegan news wrap up, is that many grocery chains have taken note and actually taken action and stopped carrying the products. And even more have joined them since then, including Kroger and Target. PETA does a lot of shitty things. I have entire videos dedicated to shitty things that PETA has done, but almost single-handedly blowing the whistle on this and changing the market in such a short period of time it's pretty amazing. I guess it's easy to get people to empathize with monkeys, right? And given that there are so many other brands that don't use monkeys to harvest their coconuts, it's a pretty easy switch. And easy for grocery stores too, because again, they have other options. Many like Kroger have their own coconut milk that they sell. Number three, Light Life. All of Light Life's products. Why? shitty marketing practices. I made a whole video on this actually about a year ago when it happened and basically Light Life made this clean break campaign denigrating other vegan products, namely Impossible Foods and Beyond Burger for not being natural enough and for having too many ingredients. A logic-defying concept with zero relevance to health or product quality intended to distract consumers from the inferiority of Light Life and Maple Leafs products. <laughs> Get it fucked. It's just so stupid. And I think as, uh, was that Impossible Foods or Beyond Burger, um, as they pointed out, like this is exactly the kind of rhetoric that 
animal agriculture uses to denigrate vegan products, right? Like, it's not natural. It's got so many ingredients. You can't pronounce the name, so it must be bad. <laughs> Whatever. No one likes smart bacon anyway. Except for me, of course. <laughs> Finally, number four, Sabra Hamas. Why? Because free Palestine. I don't agree with all of the BDS platform. Many Israeli companies are innocent of the actions of their government, but the Strauss Group, which owns Sabra, is like the Israeli equivalent of MyPillow or Hobby Lobby in the US, supporting illegal occupation and expansion under the ultra-conservative right-wing Zionist beliefs, and materially supporting military action and human rights abuses against Palestinians. To me, this isn't like typical banal corporate evil where a company has their fingers in factory farming for profit or, you know, a company makes unethical campaign donations for political favors. This is done on principle, irrespective of profit. And BDS explains that they've been, you know, pressured into obscuring the fact of their contributions, but they haven't actually changed their behavior. Even if you don't care about human rights, or if you've bought into the false narrative that BDS is largely motivated by anti-Semitism, Israel's illegal actions as an aggressor state prevents peace talks and destabilizes the Middle East, which then draws the US and other allied countries into this instability and destabilizes the world. Just to be fair, this is a really easy, convenient stance for me to take because Sabra tastes like hot garbage. I really don't understand how y'all eat that shit. It is so bad. But for some good news, and on the opposite side of things, the opposite side of the spectrum, we do have some brands like Ben & Jerry's that not only do they make some of the best vegan ice cream, they've taken an ideological stance against selling their ice cream in illegally occupied territories. It's a small symbol, but it's something that could make a big difference by making life a little less convenient for complicit settlers in those occupied regions. It would be pretty unfair to hold children accountable, children who have grown up in these territories as Israeli citizens, but any adult who knowingly moves onto land stolen from people whose corpses aren't even cold yet, just so they can afford a bigger house, maybe they don't deserve ice cream. Anyway, most other vegan products aren't BDS relevant, but you might want to check where your dates come from. This is something I just learned about, actually. Luckily, we get dates from Trader Joe's, which are US grown and very affordable, $4.99 a pound. At Kroger, they're $7.99 a pound, and I think that's on sale. So that's it. Again, I don't want anyone to feel like they're not doing enough or whatever. These are relatively small things, but I'm often asked about things that we can do to make a little bit more of a difference. And I think most people immediately go to recycling stuff like that, which can be important. I have a video going into more detail on that whole thing, but I think these are even easier and can make a real difference. I think particularly when it comes to palm oil and avoiding palm oil as much as possible, which is much easier, I think, when it comes to food than when it comes to like, laundry detergent products like that, that can be a little difficult. I got real sick of dealing with subpar cleaning materials. So yeah, most of the cleaning stuff that I use is just whatever cheap Kroger brand stuff, which is palm or petroleum. Great. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know any other products that you guys can think of, vegan products that you don't consume, not because you just don't like them. I mean, oh my God, if I've made a video <laughs> just vegan products I don't like, period, it would be, what, five hours long? But yeah, stuff you don't consume for like ethical reasons, that would be interesting. Anyway, like the video if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload. You can support the channel, patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I upload two exclusive videos there for $5 plus patrons, two videos a month. And yeah, that's it. Thanks again. New video soon. Killing of orangutans and how do you say orang orang? I feel like I always pronounced it with tang as if there's a G at the end when I was a kid, but there's not a G. So how do you actually say it? It feels so weird to look up a word that you've known like since you were a baby. Orangutan. 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 Well, that sounds wrong. Ever since orangutan entered English, people have tended to pronounce it by rhyming the second and last syllables. In some European languages, including English, a G is sometimes added to the last syllable, but orangutan is not an accepted spelling. So it's not just me. Everyone's an idiot. <laughs>